Hey everyone, so today we're going to be going over the camera anatomy. So this is covering a lot of the buttons that you'll find on a camera, uh, the back side, as well as menu settings. While this is pretty consistent uh, for a few features, there's a lot of things that change based on the brand that you have. So whether you're shooting Nikon, Canon, Olympus, whatever it might be, um, you'll really need to dive into your manual and see some of these features. But we're going to sort of focus on the key things that either are the same across the board or that we recommend you go and find in your manual so that you know how to operate your camera. It's a really important section and this is sort of the last technical side before we get into more of the creativity and art. So let's dive right in. So now we're going to go into some of the buttons that you'll find sort of on any camera. Uh, this camera is a Nikon D7000, but most of the features we'll talk about in this section really you can find on any camera. Um, so first off is the shutter release button and this is something that for most cameras is going to be sort of industry standard. Typically you'll find it where your right hand rests nicely and the key thing here is that as you softly hold it down you can see my lens adjusting it's actually on automatic focus and when you gently press it that's when it finds the focus. Now you give a little firmer push and it takes the photo. So again, lightly touch, lightly press down, it'll get focus, it'll make a little noise to let you know that it's found it. And really when you're looking through the viewfinder, you'll know that it's found focus. So find the focus, fully press, take in a photo. Now on the back side here, you'll typically find this button and it's a little rectangle with a play button triangle in it. That's your photo review and Pretty much all cameras I've ever seen have this button and it lets you go through and look at the photos that you've just taken. On most photos as well, on the back here, you'll have a plus and a minus sort of magnifying glass and this lets you look at your photo and then zoom in and look at, you know, oh was it really well in focus or, you know, maybe you want to go back and see multiple photos that you've taken and it really is a great way to, to look through. The other thing that most cameras will have is this navigation button and it, it changes in style but the concept more or less is the same. Up, down, left, right, a select button sort of in the middle. And then typically right next to that photo review button you'll find a little trash can, a little delete button. And if you press it nothing happens. But when you're in the photo review you'll have your images loaded and if you select that trash can you then typically have to hit it again to say yes, confirm the, the delete that photo, or you can press the photo review and it cancels it. So this might change dependent on the camera you have, so you should look at the manual, but this is sort of a, a typical thing I've seen on Nikons and Canons at least. From there, and this is something that differs on Nikon and Canons, but it's actually fairly similar, is the white balance and ISO buttons. So you can see on the top here is a little WB, that's white balance, and there's an ISO, and ISO is something we'll get into in later sections, but it's ultimately the sensitivity of your camera. It's, it's a very key feature when taking photos, and on Nikons, you have it back here. On Canons, you'll actually have a row of buttons up here, and you'll have the white balance and the ISO up there as well. Another great feature that is different on Nikons and Canons is this guy right here, and on Nikons, you have a little little light symbol, it's a button right here and you click that and it illuminates this section here so that during nighttime you can see what the information is on this screen. On Nikons, you simply go from off to on and then sort of bring it farther over and that turns on this light so that you can see what your shutter and f-stop and different information is on this screen. For most cameras, this top screen along with this back screen are where you're going to find a lot of the information of how you're shooting, the different settings you have activated. Canon actually has a great screen back here that gives you all the information. And if you want, you can go into your menu and actually have that on your Nikon as well. But it's an option that some people like using, some people don't. I personally don't use it because it drains your battery just a little bit faster. The next key button is your flash. And most cameras will have this button sort of on, on the front side of your camera. And it's a little thunderbolt looking thing and that's ultimately to activate your flash. So if I'm in my manual settings, I click flash, it opens the flash up. It's pretty simple and depending on what settings you've set in the menu, you'll be able to automatically have that flash pop up when necessary or you'll have to turn it on yourself by clicking this button. 
So the next feature we're going to talk about is this little wheel right here. It's typically for your left hand to operate. And as you see here, there's the M for manual, A for aperture priority, S for shutter priority, and P for program. And these are all things that you'll learn about throughout this course, but really you should go into your manual and read up about how these features change for your camera. On here also you'll have the auto feature, which on a Canon is actually just a green rectangle. On Nikons you'll have the auto actually. And as you get into professional photography, that button actually will disappear completely. You'll only be able to choose manual, aperture priority, shutter priority. On this camera, you also have user settings where you can preset your different settings. Um, and then scene modes, which a lot of cameras have. Sometimes you'll have a little guy running and that's for fast sports. Maybe you'll have a cloud and that's for a cloud setting. And there's a lot of presets that, you know, Canon T3Is or uh, D5000 Nikons will have on here so that you can just quickly go and do that. But this course is really all about that little M and going to your manual feature and getting to know how to set all the settings on here. So next, and this is really a feature of Nikon, I, I haven't seen this on too many other cameras, is this little wheel underneath this other settings wheel where you're able to actually select, you know, do you want to take a single photo? And then you have these two guys, CL and CH, which are continuous low and continuous high. That's where you're taking multiple photos at once. So CL, I believe on this camera, is three photos per second. CH is five photos per second. So it's really being able to do a, a burst photography and, and make sure you capture the photo. We'll be talking about that later on in this course though. Then you have a couple other features here which are a little more complex. You have multiple exposure, you have remote control, you have timer. These are just different modes that you can select, which on a Canon, you know, you just have to go into your menu. But for Nikon, they've set it up right here so it's nice and quick. You can do your burst mode and then go back to your single and then you can go back to your timer. I mean, it's, it, it's all right there and really uh, accessible. So the next key feature I want to talk about is this guy right here. It's a little, little wheel um, and depending on the camera you have, it can do various things. But typically, this is your f-stop, your iris or your aperture. And it's something we'll talk about a little bit later, but ultimately it's one of the key things when doing manual photography. One of the biggest differences between a Canon and a Nikon is that on the Nikon here, you'll have a second wheel and this is for your shutter speed. On a Canon, what you'll have actually is a big wheel right here and that's where you select your shutter. These are both programmable so you can actually change them if you want to, but it's really nice, you know, right here I can do that and then that and then go take a photo. This does change based on your camera, so go into your uh, manual, see how your camera operates. Typically though, it'll be right here so you can do it just with your right hand. So there's a few last features we want to talk about and some of this has to do more so with video but a lot of DSLR users are using video these days so I think it's useful. The first is the minute mark and this is actually a very classic photography thing and for video it's very important because this is actually where your sensor is. So if you follow this line across you'd find your sensor right here in the camera and this is important for focusing because it's from this point that you're saying an object is you know, six inches away, a foot away, 10 feet away. This is your focus plane, where that all is being measured from. From there, another key thing is the live view mode. And this is something that changes based on the camera you have, but typically it'll be a little LV. And for Nikons, you go like that and it turns on your live view. So you're able to actually look at what you're doing back here. And you can either do photos through here, but it's a little bit slower. Um, it's really meant for video so that you can do video recording. And then your record button will typically be a button with a red dot and that red dot means you're recording. When you hit record, you'll typically get a little red dot here saying REC or rec recording uh, and it just lets you know that you're actually filming. You click it again, stops recording. This does chew up your battery a lot faster and it also takes up a lot more memory. So know that when you're doing video, both your memory and battery life will go much quicker. Uh, it just requires a lot more energy and memory space. So now we're going to talk about some of the more physical things on the camera. Um, first off, you know, you have your viewfinder. This is where you put your eye to look through and, and you know, take photos. It's sort of key. If you are nearsighted or farsighted, typically there's a little dial here and you'll be able to change that based off of your vision. So if you look through and everything's blurry, you might play with this little scroll here. Uh, next you have the hot shoe. This is really for accessories, for flashes, for different mounts. 
On the bottom here, you'll have your quarter 20 screw and that is meant for tripod attachment. When putting on a tripod, you know, depending on the lens you're using, try and get it sort of centered in weight. You don't want it, you know, falling forward or backwards. So just because it's here, that doesn't mean that needs to be the center. Sometimes you'll actually want to move it a little bit farther up, a little farther back, depending on what you have on there. For most cameras on the bottom here, you'll have your battery port and that's just, you know, where you put your battery in. Um, typically, they have sort of a curve shape or something that says you can only really fit the battery one way. You'll also have this little guy which allows you to release it or it clicks in. Make sure that's shut, you know, don't let moisture in there. Also, this is more of a, an advanced feature, but some people will get a vertical grip or a extra battery pack. And this is actually where you go and plug that in. Make sure not to lose this guy though, because if you ever take that vertical grip off, you don't want that, those electronics to be exposed. And where your hand grip is, typically, you'll also find your card port. And this will be something that says card or maybe has a little card icon. So you just slide that open and you'll find the different card ports in here. For this camera, it shoots on SD cards. Some cameras shoot on uh, CF cards and you know it, it's changing constantly what you're shooting on. But for the most part, with SD, you click it, it comes out, you pull it out. To put in, you just click in and it holds firm. For CF cards, typically there's a little button and you click that button, it pops it out, you push it back in. Really make sure your card is dry, make sure you don't get any moisture in there because that can damage your camera. And lastly, if you come over here to this side, this always changes what the options are here, but typically you'll find USB, this one has HDMI for video recording, audio video outs, you'll have just different connections and, and things. This really changes based on the camera you have and the different features. HDMI is becoming very popular for video recording and being able to have a monitor attached. Lastly, and this is really a Nikon thing, uh, I think some other cameras have it, but it's an autofocus to manual switch. And this is basically because Nikon allows you to use older lenses. So when you put on an old lens that, like this one, I can't select on the lens auto or manual focus. So instead, I have to use this guy, which tells it either be in manual mode or go over to uh, autofocus mode. And finally, this is something that really changes based on the camera, but you'll have this button here and this is your lens release. So this allows you to take your lens off. And depending on the camera you have, for Nikons, you'll have a little white button here. For Canons, it'll be a red button. And what you do is you line your lens up. There'll typically be a white dot or red dot on your camera. You attach it at that point, you twist, and it's locked in. So I know this is a lot of information, and to be honest, I've been shooting Nikon for 10 years. I've learned how their cameras are built, learned a lot of their features, and seen how they've changed as well. Depending on the camera you get, you need to go into your manual, you need to do the research, you know, maybe watch this video a couple more times to learn these different things, because ultimately when you go out into the field, you want to know, oh, I want to do this, this, and this. And it's easy, it's second nature almost, and you really get to focus on the creativity. So ultimately, this is gonna take a little bit of time, but you know, watch this course again, read your manual, just practice, get to know all these different buttons and, and what they do. And really, it's gonna be the most important thing for when you get out into the field, because it'll be second nature. You won't even have to think about what you're doing.